He doesn't know anything about peptides. He does not use peptides. Why do people in the world listen to people who don't have personal experience? This is like the idiots that go out and work with doctors for t therapeutic testosterone or hormone optimization if you're a woman who isn't actually using it on themselves either. It's like if you're that stupid that you're going to trust, trust your doctor, the lab coat god. If you're going to trust a doctor who doesn't know anything about utilizing therapeutic hormones on themselves, then you're going to be the same kind of person that's going to trust a guy like this dude who's clearly never used peptides before but can go and regurgitate in staged prep standing in front of a teleprompter with a black background and a black shirt, probably casting black source and sorcery on you. I don't know. That's, you know, for you to decide. Rampant but like, speculation. <laughs> but I mean, but I mean, like the reality is, is like, why would you listen to this dude? I am a 20 year user of peptides. If there's anyone on this planet that can say is an expert of using different peptides, it would be me, Hunter, close to 10 years combined we got close to 30 we're here to tell you what peptides work how they work we're not sitting here regurgitating google or you know google doctor or any of these other things where he's getting all this quote unquote science from you know again it's all science that is you know mainstream accepted by allopathic or the fda or the dea or the ama or whatever alphabet you know acronym you want to use but at the end of the day he's making statements that clearly show that he doesn't use peptides, especially the ones he's talking about. The last thing is, and this is, we've heard this for a decade, bro. BPC-157 will increase tumor growth. Now, again, show me any person who's ever used heavy, you know, call them heroic dosages of BPC-157 that got a tumor or a cancer from it. I've not seen it. I haven't heard it. Again, is it technically, theoretically possible? Of course. It's theoretically possible, bro, that you and I could walk out of our house tonight and get hit by anything in our neighborhood and die. But that's not going to tell people. It's, it's like what you just said. It's going back to setting people up to be fearful of these products. That's what it's doing. That's what, that's, that is. that's what this is because right now I can list off 10 things. I could say there is fluoride in every piece of tap water that you drink. Are you not going to drink water right. when you're out at a restaurant or something? I could say right. glyphosate increases chances of right. Um, all these different autoimmune diseases and leaky gut and everything. What are you going to never eat something with glyphosate on it again? So like, of course, there's a possibility that anything can do anything. But if you are constantly reinforcing to people cancer, 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 all these different things, again, it goes back to like preventing someone from being able to discern for themselves. Like you could, why doesn't he talk on other podcasts about Yerba Mate potentially increasing cancer risk? Why doesn't he talk about all these other things that could potentially damage and cause cancer or do all these things? And, you know, I don't really listen to him. Like we're just doing this because it was like a, a yeah. famous thing, but like, I'm just saying like, you can't, you don't want to like reinforce all of this stuff. That's just like not really relevant. That's in practice. You know, every prescription medication, if you read the label insert, there's what an average of like 200 side it's effects insane, for, dude. on prescription insane. medications, but I don't see them like banging the drum of, you know, like Zoloft and the prescription, you know, side effects for that that are causing. I mean, look, people. man, it's obvious that Andrew Huberman, Dr. Andrew Huberman at the Huberman lab, where they teach you about science, that he comes from a mainstream point of view and the mainstream thinks that peptides will kill you. The peptides don't have any human studies. The peptides are animal models only. The peptides are fringe and blah, blah, blah. I mean, bro, you and I both know that the average orthopedic surgeon in the United States is fucking ignorant of peptides. They are literally still performing high expensive cost surgeries in elderly age. I'll just call them aging men and women that have a high rate of failure that they make a lot of money on when they could easily just uh, write a script for PPC 157 and TB 500 instead of having an AC hour, a PC hour, an MC hour, a shoulder reconstruction, or all these places that they just unnecessarily cut the human body. I mean, we're, we're, we're in a landscape now where there's a massive bifurcation. You're either, you understand peptides, you listen to people like us who teach you how to use peptides, or you don't. And you listen to guys like this dude who comes from the mainstream, who has a black shirt on and a doctor, you know, PhD or whatever he is at a lab telling you that it's all about science. And then you get into fear because the fear-based people in the science side of the world will say there's no studies.
And in the world that you and I live in, you are your own study. You are a biochemically unique individual who's an N of one. And what works for you might not work for me. What works for Hunter might not work for me. What works for me might not work for Hunter. It's very, very simple. But if you're going to watch this podcast and you're going to listen to this dude talk about animal studies only, no, you know, human studies are not available, high risk, causes tumors, may cause, cause cancer. We're about to go to HGH in a second because we obviously love talking about that you're going to be in fear. And once you go into fear, you're going to have the paralysis and the indecision of not being able to actually probably use peptides. You'll probably watch this podcast, Hunter, and I want you to comment on this. And if, again, you're a mainstreamer, a normie, you're not using these things, and you listen to Andrew Huberman, which is majority of his audience, you're probably going to come away from this podcast and say, oh my God, peptides are too dangerous. Well, yeah, that's what I try to do when I watch through this is put on because obviously we understand this stuff. I try to put on my thinking cap of like, you know, I'm someone in my forties and fifties. I'm really successful. I notice like my healing starting to slow down. My fat loss ability starting to slow down. And I'm looking for like that extra edge. Cause I'm doing everything right. I'm training right. I'm eating right. You know, within, you know, 80 to 90% of the time. And I'm listening to this. And if I'm one of these people, all I get from this is fear from peptides right. and fear, fear and uncertainty about what's happening. As I'm scrolling through, you'll love this. I mean, this is what you see. Safety, cycling, tumor risk. I mean, think about this. This is all literally created to incite fear in the end user, in the person who's watching this, who knows nothing about peptides, who's listening to a person who doesn't even use peptides. I mean, bro, this is where the mainstream world is. They well, are to, so disconnected. Dude, to that point where he, so that's that uh chapter title is safety uh, cycling and doses he doesn't explain proper cycling at all of like why you would use bpc 157 for eight to 12 weeks and then take time off because of the antibody response you're going to get from it which is going right. to cause the down regulation of the receptors but he doesn't going... talk about it because he doesn't know about it exactly and that's what like people wouldn't understand is like okay I think before you would ever have like risk of tumor from BPC-157, you're just not going to be able to take enough because the dose is going to like wean itself out from being efficacious because once you take it for 12, 16 weeks at a time, it becomes really, really ineffective, which he doesn't really explain. And so this is the thing I have at, at the end of the TB-500. He kind of glosses over TB-500, but he doesn't talk about why it's synergistic with BPC-157. So like BPC-157 works in isolation. TB-500 works really well in isolation. The angiogenesis and the tissue repair and the reduction in inflammation that those two have when paired together work synergistically. So it's like a one plus one equals right. three effect. And he always, he just says these are like two starter peptides, but he doesn't introduce the concept of like how peptides work synergistically together to enhance results as opposed to just in isolation. So I would, it would have been nice, like I was hoping just for like people's education, they would say like, here's why we use BPC and TB together. Cause you don't really use like BPC, you know, and like, you know, like some crazy, like uh kiss peptin peptide together. Right. But you I, think, put Hunter, I think we should just stop the podcast right now and you should check your phone because I just got the Cassiopeian experiment. The underground is part two notification. <laughs> not, not that that's not relevant or anything for you guys in the know, but no, but to keep going with what you're saying, um, I'll, I can press play real quick and let him talk about TB 500, but everything you said is hundred percent accurate. But again, I will just say this is coming from a person who does not use peptides. They are not an authority on peptides. They are not an expert on peptides. Nobody that stands in front of a podium, especially one like this, that is a transcript, not a transcription, but a teleprompter with a black background that's been highly edited multiple times, does not demonstrate mastery of anything, let alone peptides. And again, coming from two people who are experts of peptides, we're telling you right now that it's obvious that he is literally just repeating, quote unquote, textbook science it's not relevant to the world world in people that are ultimately choosing to use peptides. And look, most people that watch this, bro, are not going to be normies. Nobody that's in the normie world watches the stuff that you and I put out there. But thankfully, there are a lot of people that are not normies that do watch ours and that are you know catching on to us because they are finding out that we are actually real credible people who have been using these products and give, give people really good advice. We obviously have our course. We have our private membership group. The book is out there. 
There's all sorts of stuff that proves our credibility. And again, you don't have to believe us. We're just two guys talking to you on a podcast right now. Talk to the people that work with us. Talk to the people in our private membership group. Talk to the thousands of people who have purchased the courses over the last two or three years. So I just think it's funny because again, as somebody you know who, who, who does not watch Andrew Huberman, obviously, uh, but does write emails about him because my team sends me funny things. And obviously we were, we've been waiting for this because bro, we knew exactly what this was going to be. And he has not let us down. 